Hello again. Um, I just want to do a quick update on what I've been doing so far on the shop uh, upgrades. Now last time I left it with you seeing me cutting this front section off which was out here and taking it back. Um, I rebuilt all the cabinets, moving them back, got the floor down underneath it all with the membrane. Uh, and then you'll see from the photos if you've been following it, the full extension draw lines. Much better than what I had before. I used to have to really drag these things in and out and there was only halfway in and only halfway out. It was very difficult getting things in there. Take for example, these sliding boxes. Now this is for my marking, measuring, marking and gauges, small gauges. And these trays, I could never take them out. There was in there permanent because the drawer only ever used to come out to there. I couldn't get them out. Now full extension. And they're good because like this one, it's very heavy, but in lines. And again, over here, all of them pulling out as far as I want them. We've got it with them all. And you can see the very easy system. It just replace what you've already got. Um, if you've got the basic type of uh, draw lines like this, which just sit underneath the bottom of it and it drives on. It's pretty much the same thickness as what we've got there. So it will replace space for space into the gap. Now, if you're gonna do that, a little tip here is before you take the draw out, mark at any point between top and bottom, it doesn't matter, mark the draw and the case exactly in the same place where it's sitting on both sides. They don't even have to be even. You know, just roughly in the middle. Then, take the drawer out, take the old drawer glide off, get the new drawer glide, like this, which they actually come in two pieces. Was it out? Little black lever there, pull it, and out it comes. That's the bit that goes on the drawer itself. That wants to go onto here. This bit goes onto the inner wall. And all you do, you've made your marks, square them up, and then exactly level, fit that, so that the centre screw holes are on that line you've made. Same with the wall. Square it up, the line on the screws, get it up. All you're looking at is make sure that when you set this on the wall, it is set just a little bit back. I mean, a little bit by in two or three mil back from the front of the, of the case. That just makes sure you don't get any banging and the front door will sit tight against the wall. With this, you've got a, a metal flat bit there which stops on the drawer like. Just make that butt to the front of the drawer. To there. And that's all. Level, on the line, and you'll just be able to swap them over one for one. If not, well, you know, if you know how to do a drawer glide out of any type of drawer glides, it's basically the same sort of principle. Now, once these are on, the good thing is that they literally just snap into place. And they're back in again. And you can put the drawers in and out, just that simple. Now, on the end, I've got my slide out box, um, which, yeah, this unit's in the way, but it's on wheels. Everything's movable over here, um, because it's still undecided where things are gonna be permanently. But that will stay there. Um, this, I don't know where I've got, not yet. It's all down to this saw table and the sliding table section of it, which has a travel distance of three meters. That's a long way, and I've got to keep all that space clear. Um, so I, it's where things are going to be will just determine what angles and what gaps that table leaves. Right, the other things that I need to do is um, the electrical systems. Because they're running on 16 or 20 amp supplies, depending on which machine it is, um, we don't want any plug tops. Uh, and it, being here, it's quite possible some of these items might actually come with a, a moulded plug on it. You never know. Um, we'll be cutting it off and we'll be going for these. Um, now that the IP44 rated, IP46 rated, so they're, they're due for outside, they're, they're fine. Um, they're actually for caravans, so you know, they're designed for that sort of thing. 
but it's a very good positive plug and socket. As you can see, that's the socket. Three pin, same as we have in everything on English, um, but round pin for better con connection to outdoor. And in, and it can't come back out again. Um, that'll mean that these things can only plug into selected areas, and each area will be governed with its own um, fuse spur and it back to its own uh, MCB in the box. Um, I've already put one down here for the saw table when it comes near the extractor. Um, so when the saw table comes, I can just get it and plug it in, and get it up and running nice and quick. Um, that's already on its own isolator back and again on its own fuse. The only one that I need to do is for the bandsaw, which hasn't come yet, so, and I don't know where it's going to go yet, so again, I can't even do the wiring side of that yet. One other thing I've been looking at is um, spotlight working. Um, when you're like on your pillar drill, uh, on the bandsaw and such, you get, I've had these little funny lights. I made one for the bandsaw, I had a little bulb one for this over the other area. I want something a little bit better than that, without knocking up my electric bill. Um, and then I came across from the electrical supplier an LED spotlight. It's a floodlight, designed for outdoor again, so it's IP rated. Um, but it's only 11 watts. And man, does it give you some power? There it is. Sitting up there, nice and bright. I won't shine it uh, directly at you because it'll probably do me camera. In. But as you can see, very intense light, very good, and just 11 watts. We're not showing 150, 300, 500 watts or anything like you'd normally have to put up there. And it's given a beautiful area. So this is the type of thing I'm going to be putting in over the main work areas that are away from the main bench. The main bench is lit up by um, the strip lights, which are fine. That is what I want to put in on them, and some switching system, pull cord or something like that, to get it going. Now the other thing, Winter, out in a cold shed. It might be a garage, it might have a nice warm fire, but I've only got cold water coming in. I'm not gonna be pumping hot water into it. I'm 50 meters away from the house, so that will be a colossal expense. So I'm gonna put myself a little water eater in. And here we are, this is my sink area. Bit of a mess at the moment, but cold tap. And I've gone and got myself this Triton T30 hand wash water heater. Not expensive, only 3 kilowatts instructions. Um, so everything will be nice and warm for me and relatively cheap. Little outspout there, and it will just sit very nicely there. So I need to get that wired in and plumbed in. Um, so that's another little job to be done. But at the moment, still preparing everything for the saw table, getting things out of the way that I can't do when the saw table's here. The main thing at the moment is the floor. You saw I got the wooden floor down, good and solid, nice and warm now, as well as being level and dry. Um, the vinyl. Now you've seen I had vinyl spattered all over the place beforehand. Uh, it was only just laid, only temporary, and it was there because I knew well, I had hoped at some point I would do the floor better and I didn't want to be bonding that down to the concrete and then wasting it. Now that the floor is down, now is the time to fit this vinyl properly. Now it's not just your lino rubbish DIY stuff, this is your top grade, it's an outdoor contract. Um, quartz impregnated non-slip vinyl, it normally gives you a 15 year life. No, it might get less than that in here, it's a workshop. But it's going to last a lot longer than putting anything else down. It's going to protect the floor and it's going to add to that um, waterproofing and to the insulation value. Uh, I'm going to be bonding it down with a very good vinyl adhesive. Um, I've been using this for quite some years now and I've had no problems. Um, made by Bal. The F44, it's a rubber based solution. Um, you put it down on the floor with a trowel and as much as possible, take it back up again. Leave just a thin film, otherwise your vinyl will bubble.
you know, get little ripples all over the place. It's, it's quite a mess. Um, even rolling it out, if you've got something like a, a 100 kilo roller, yeah, no problem. But I ain't got one, and I don't want one. Hi, sorry about the break, but it seems this video is taking a bit longer uh, than I first planned it to do. In fact, it's going to run on for about 30 minutes in total. Um, so I've chopped it into three interesting pieces for you, um, bite-sized bits. If you want to, you can just skip to the next one and keep going straight through. I'll have a tea break in between. But, but whatever, make sure you watch it all because it has some interesting bits in it. Alright, bye.